Like never in my life have I seen a queen like that. Looks like the bees all sorted out their queens too when they wanted to be there. Yeah, they equalize themselves. Like oh, you guys are used to working together. They are used to working together, you can tell. She's up there. I got close to her. She's still in there. She's fat. <laughs> One of the first questions that so many new beekeepers ask when they first start beekeeping, they go on YouTube, they look at all these beekeepers that have been beekeeping for so, so long, and they see how big their hives are, how many boxes they have, and how much honey they have coming in. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna start wondering, okay, how do I make honey like all of those big beekeepers do? So today I'm gonna show you some of the trade secrets for how we make so much honey so quickly. Come on. So last time you guys saw the bee yard, there were some pallets right over here, but we just moved those to a new honey yard that we are setting up right now. So right now we only have these three pallets over here that we are making this our honey yard at the moment. So May and the beginning of June was absolutely crazy when it came to the nectar that was coming in and the honey that the bees were making. As you guys saw, I had some really thick frames and they were filling up boxes so crazy fast. But... If you haven't heard yet and you're from Michigan, we are now starting to enter a little bit of a June dearth. I have noticed that the flow has kind of turned off a little bit and slowed down because they're not bringing in nearly as much as they were before. We had um, some pretty dry periods, so I'm guessing that's probably why. We didn't get rain, it had to have been for a whole entire month. We just finally got a little bit of rain the last couple days and we definitely needed it. But because of that, that really put a dampener on the, um, the blooming of the flowers and each flow that was coming in. So that kind of sucks. But so I'm going to show you guys some of the tips that us beekeepers use to really make the most honey we possibly can. Um, making a lot of honey is not only having good bees and good genetics, but it's also having um, the right management techniques and how you move things about in your hive and how you take care of your bees that really helps um, benefit the most off of that flow. So right now I'm going through all these hives. I haven't been in them in, I don't even want to say how long because it's a little embarrassing, um, but life has been busy. I'm sure you guys can understand. Um, so it's a good thing that the uh, flow kind of uh, slowed down a little bit because otherwise I'd have a huge problem on my hands right now. But so I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing to move things around and whatnot um, as I'm doing it. Yeah, you can definitely tell that the flow has slowed down for sure. Honestly, I kind of feel like it completely cut off um, because they should have these frames built out already. And... The problem is they don't, and they're not drawing wax. Um, now I did que I did end up requeening these hives. Not the best time of year to be requeening, but um, because of how we were trying to expand and whatnot, that is just what worked out the best for us. Um, because we're focusing more on our numbers this year than we are um, on honey. Honey is just a byproduct, is what we always say. But got some nice, lovely brood patterns. I see. That's always awesome to see, but all right. So one of the main things in order to have a ton of honey coming in is the very first rule is you need to have a lot of bees in your hive. Not only do you need a lot of bees in your hive to be able to bring honey and nectar into the colony, 
but you also need a lot of bees to be able to take after the brood because in order to have a really big population of bees that can bring in that honey you need to have brood that is also emerging soon because as you know bees only live around six weeks in the summertime so in order for that to happen though in order for the queen to lay a lot you one need to be giving her space properly but two again you need to have a lot of bees so that there's enough bees to take care of the brood because so fun fact the queen is actually pretty much like a slave in the hive i know that sounds terrible but it's actually the workers that are in complete control of everything that goes on in this hive so if they know they don't have a strong enough workforce to be able to take after and look after that brood they're not going to let that queen lay as much as she wants to lay and in fact even if she did lay they will actually eat the eat the eggs if it's too many you see this a lot a lot of times in the fall time if they want to shrink their cluster size based off of how much uh, food and resources they have available in the hive, they will also do this. Um, and this also what dictates how well your hive does in the springtime. Um, so hive numbers is crucial when it comes to hive health and bringing in that honey. So if you have a high number of bees in the hive and you have a queen that is just laying like crazy, then here are some things that you want to keep in mind. So first things first, you always want to make sure you keep your pollen frames to the outside. Um, the bees will generally move things around how they want them to be in the hive, but I usually like to, if I see, if I come in here and I see that they have like a, um, a bee bread frame, like right over here and they're making all of this food reserves. What I'll end up doing is I'll move that all the way to the outside. I'll put some empty frames in the middle from the draw out and put more honey in, more brood in, whatever they need to do. And I will move those frames to the outside and say I'm putting a box on. I'll also move those to the outside in that top box. Um, that way you're giving the queen space you're giving them space to keep expanding their brood nest because they like to use pollen to pretty much block off where their hive ends um they almost like use it as a wall but they also like to keep it close enough to the brood because that's what they use to feed the brood okay let's see if she's even laying up here one thing i've been noticing in these hives is that they have been putting all of the honey next to the next hive so they've been sharing this wall because there's heat there and it helps keep the the honey warm um so that they can work it and do whatever they need to do but it looks like this one's actually not doing that they have a ton of eggs over here and yeah this has this is oh my gosh you can tell this is a viplidu graph because there's eggs in every single cell she knows how to lay she is amazing at that um that's one of the like the tell 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 all i don't even know that saying oh my gosh making a fool of myself but that is like a, one of the signs that this is a viplidu queen um one of her daughters because she has a certain laying pattern that is unique to her meaning she lays in every single cell so we got some more brood over here looks like she's got some more brood over there too um, this is definitely a strong colony because I see a lot of drone brood. Um, when you see a lot of drone brood, that also tells you that the colony is strong. As that implies. But what I'm pretty much wanting to look for today... So, I need to make sure they're not wanting to prepare to swarm, which it looks like they're starting to make cups, but they don't have any eggs in them. Um... I've got my queen over here. But yeah, see all that drone brood at the bottom? And then I got my queen over here, if you can spot her right there in the middle of the frame, looking nice and fat and beautiful, just like we like to see. And she's looking for a place to lay. She is just moving all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna take off these queen cups. Whenever I see them, I always like to just remove them because it sets them back just a little bit. They will remake them. It does not mean they're gonna swarm when you see queen cups. Um, just in my own experience, I've noticed that the moment I see queen cups is the moment I need to start doing something in terms of like giving them space or like moving things around um, because otherwise they're going to want to swarm. So I usually try to stay on top of that. Um, okay, so we're gonna move this frame. So how I'm giving her space is I'm moving a frame that I have out here Let's see, this one's got some honey in it, so I'm not, I'm not going to move this one. I'm going to move the one next to it. I'm going to keep expanding the brood nest for them and moving it out. And instead, moving frames in, like this one that's partially drawn 
This one already has eggs in the side, so I'm gonna do this. This is she's got brood over there too. Okay. Cool beans. Like I said, that is what I like to see. But okay, so let's talk about another tip. So some of you may be looking at your hive and thinking, okay, this hive needs to be a little bit stronger because it's not going to pull in that much honey and they aren't going to be strong enough to be able to really ramp up those, um, that brood. And something that you can do is you can do something called a bee bomb. Um, it's crazy how good it works. I've done it so many times and all it is is just taking one or two frames of brood from another colony and putting it in that colony. And what's going to end up happening when you put in capped brood like that is one, you're adding in bees that were already on the frame, but also two, when that brood emerges, that brood, if you have a, a frame that's full of, of capped brood front and back, that's going to be equivalent to like three frames of bees. So that is going to make them expand so, so fast. So they're going to have bees to feed all the, the new brood. So the queen's going to lay more. And two, they're also going to have more bees. They're going to get older and graduate to be able to start pulling in more nectar and whatnot. Um, so definitely utilize that. The way the bees grow, it actually works exponentially. So when you pull frames and you put them into a hive that then makes that hive even stronger and makes them really ramp up even more, it's crazy because then once they get to a certain point, you can just take those frames back and put them into another hive. So you're constantly moving frames around and boosting each hive um, and really getting a benefit out of that. Okay, so another thing that you can do, this is actually perfect. I'm going into this hive right now and I'm seeing this. Um, so what I am seeing is I went into this hive, it's a double stack, and in this hive, um, they're still building out some frames right here, but all over here is all decked out brood. The queen is actually up here right now as we speak as well. But then I went into the bottom box and a lot of these frames have empty comb. There was some brood over here, which I just rearranged some frames so I could expand that brood nest out. Um, because like I've talked about before, Bees like to have um, their brood nest in a, a main cluster in an arc, and they'll have honey arced around them. So keeping that in mind, when you take a brood frame that is right here, and like say all the brood is right here, you take one of those frames and you move one out here so that now they have brood there and they have brood here, and then a bunch of like empty drawn out comb here, that's going to make them, once you completely close all that in, so that's going to make the queen also lay all of that up. Um, but anyway, so I did that and also something that I'm going to do is so since I'm seeing that a lot of these frames have empty comb with no eggs or brood in it, I'm going to take this box and put this box on the bottom instead because it's full of brood and whatnot. And I'm going to put this box on top of that so that then the bees will go up and she will start working all of that. Because what I'm seeing right now is that she's just hanging out in this box and she is a new queen. So another thing that is so cool and I didn't even learn until till last year, but queens are trainable just like your dog. So you can train a queen how to lay, where to lay, how much to lay, train her how to lay in an entire two story deep. And um, in order to do that though, like I said, you have to move things around, it's kind of like the bees will also show her where to go. But um, otherwise, sometimes you'll notice that you have a queen that she's just, a, just not laying well and you can't figure out why she's just staying on a couple frames, she's not laying out the whole entire hive. Um, it could be hive numbers, but also, like I keep saying, it could be because she just doesn't, she's kind of like lost in her hive. That's something that Casey usually always says, um, that you'll go into a hive and you'll see she's like laying a frame here. She's laying a frame there and she's not really laying with any general direction. Um, so try that out. Try training your queen this way and see the magic happen really fast. Okay, one thing that I want to talk about that I noticed this year when I did all of those splits, if you guys remember, Casey and I got all of these pollination hives and right away they were needing to be split. Otherwise, they're going to start swarm preparations. So we started splitting, but we weren't quite on top of the splitting in terms of they needed to be split literally every two weeks, um, which was a lot and it was kind of cold. So it was hard to make queens and whatnot. It was something that we had to, had to tackle. But okay, in doing that, this is what I noticed. So I came to the bee yard and I noticed that pretty much all of these hives had started swarm preparation. And actually the queen in this hive ended up leaving and they ended up requeening. So this is the only queen I, met, I ended up um, losing during that whole entire time. 
But something really cool that, ha that happened was, as you can see, this hive is in a triple stack and it has been crazy strong ever since. And what ended up happening is I went into the hive and she had left probably that day or the day before, but she had those capped queen cells and she had a ton of bees and a ton of brood. Um, the key is those capped queen cells. That is when, as soon as they're capped, that queen starts getting ready to leave immediately. So keeping this in mind, you can kind of use timing to your advantage. And going forward, I'm going to utilize this method. And what it is, is okay, you have a hive, you let it get really strong. Bees like to be stressed and um, actually they perform better under stress. And once they start getting that ball rolling, rolling towards a swarm, they really start kicking up fast. So what I'd like to do is always have the hive start swarm preparations, have them draw out those queen cells. A day before I know those queen cells are going to be capped. So this is where it makes it a little hard because you have to really know timing. Um, then pull that queen out, pull out an artificial swarm, put her in a nuke, have her start up fresh. So as if she just swarmed, let those queen cells develop, take out splits. If you want to, um, take out queen cells, if you want to, and use those in other colonies, because the key is when you're making queens is you want those queen cells to be in a hive that is really strong until they're capped because you need a lot of bees to feed and really care for those queens and make sure they're getting enough food um enough um enough warmth and activity and whatnot on them so when you do that they're gonna have really strong queens you wait till they're capped move them into a nuke you, like i said use a split however you need to and then let the hive requeen itself but during that time all of the brood and everything is going to hatch and this hive literally exploded because they didn't be they weren't able to send out that swarm they're originally planning for because a lot of times your hive will end up making multiple swarm cells um so if you only leave them with one one queen cell maybe two queen cells at absolute most just in case um because sometimes there's like duds and whatnot then they're going to have all these excess bees they're planning to swarm with and now they can't swarm. So now you have a ton of bees in a box and the flow is hitting because they usually swarm right before the flow hits. And all of a sudden they're pulling in so much honey, like it's insane. So I feel like I kind of explained this in a confusing way. So I hope that makes uh, that makes sense to you guys. Um, but I'm definitely going to be using that because by accident this happened and it works crazy, crazy good. So the last main thing that I kind of want to talk about, um, which I kind of briefly did talk about, is when it comes to honey, I've noticed that genetics really play a role because we have a, a lot of different genetics going on in this yard, but these main pollination hives, oh my gosh, are they honey collectors. Literally, if they do anything, it's just all they do is collect honey. But then I also have bees up there that just make a ton of brood and that they are just brood factories and then i also have bees that just like to maintain a normal healthy size they don't like to get too big and they won't let the queen lay too much um so keeping that in mind genetics are really really big when it comes to collecting a ton of honey and making a ton of honey so just keep that in mind but okay i kind of feel like i was all over the place today but again, just trying to give you guys the most amount of knowledge that I have in my noggin. So I hope that was very helpful for you guys, for you guys today. And I hope the summer is treating you. Oh, if I can even, Ooh, there we go. I hope the summer is treating you well. It definitely is treating Casey and I well. And I think that's it. I don't have anything else. Hope you're doing well. Bye-bye.